Hi, welcome to Coffee with Kim. My name is Kim Bass and I'm your host. I am so excited for today and I have to tell you I'm very, very honored to have this guest with us today. If you are someone who is in a leadership role or not in a leadership role, this is this show for you today. Today on Coffee with Kim, joining us from Phoenix, Arizona is Joseph Rosales. This business performance expert has a rich background in high performance leadership. This stems from 30 years of working with many industry leaders in 29 countries. Joseph is a speaker, author, and has a podcast, Business in the New Normal. Married to the woman of his dreams, their son is now following his father's footsteps. When not working with clients, he loves being in the outdoors. Joseph, welcome to Coffee with Kim. Wow, All right. what a great intro. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my gosh, everyone, I'm serious. This is going to be a show for you to remember to go back, watch and rewatch because I know Joseph's going to have so many takeaways um, from it today. Um, so Joseph, I'm going to have you just take a few minutes and just kind of tell me your story. Wow. So where do you begin? Uh, I, uh, I've been in business my entire adult life, uh, mostly in the area of leadership and management development, business development. And um, I you know, have done um, a number of things, but always since, I guess, since I was the age of 17, uh, I've always been in management. I was promoted and that's what I did was, was help lead and develop people. And a long retail background, uh, have had this company now 35 years, uh, the Performance Group of Arizona. Uh, and we're going to talk about my fourth book, The Leader of You. And it's, it, you know, it continues to be an amazing journey, Kim, uh, with all the, 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 the people and businesses that we get to touch, uh, and lives we get to change, uh, businesses we get to optimize. And uh, it's just it's just, it's just been amazing, and and you know I, I I come back to the people like you uh, that have been in my life now for almost a year and a half. Uh, we met uh, in Chicago, I think, yeah. and uh, and uh, immediately uh, yourself and your brother uh, and and me became friends, and and I live in Phoenix, and you live in Arizona. Uh, I mean, sorry, you live in Vegas, uh, but you're where are you today? I am in Dallas today, Dallas. still. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's a great thing. We can do business forever, right? That's thank, just thank goodness for Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Babyard or whatever platform you use, but so yeah, I've been around the business world for a long time and have had the opportunity to train thousands of leaders, managers, uh, business owners on how to optimize the performance of their business by optimizing the performance of their people. And to do that, you have to optimize the systems. I'm a huge E-Myth fan. People that know that book uh, know mm -hmm. the idea that you need to develop processes and, and systems for your business and then hire the right people and develop the right people to run those systems. People too mm -hmm. often rely on the most inconsistent you know, component of your business is your people. Your people oh, okay. change every day. Yes. Same person, different week, different thing, right? And and life happens to all of us. Absolutely. But, you know, and that's the problem with many businesses. They 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 rely on the people to produce the result. And though that's awesome and people are amazing, sometimes it puts an unfair burden on those people because the people are by nature inconsistent. And the systems yeah. are what is consistent in a business. The systems and processes that guide the journey for everybody, employees, uh, customers, clients, patients, guests, whatever you call them. And, and, mm -hmm. and so, so I get an opportunity to talk about that all the time because I, I do a lot of work with the, with the group at the EMF. Uh, and um, so, so, yeah, it, it's, it's exciting. COVID, not COVID, all of the strange things that have been going on the last year. One thing stays constant people, performance, process, those things. We call those the, th the, th the three Ps, the people, the process, the performance. Great yeah. people, great systems, still got to perform. Absolutely. Right? So. Yeah. So, 
I think I'm having a little bit of feedback, so I sorry about that if we we get that. I don't hear anything. I feel it sounds okay. good to me. I okay, good. So at least we can hear you. That will be a good thing. <laughs> um, one of the things that I my career right my career started very young and in in management and running retail stores very similar to yours. We've talked about that and coming into a corporate environment, which I did at a young age as well, I had the opportunity of growing people. And that was probably my biggest thing as I noticed um, your book, everybody, this is his book. Mm -hmm. um, this is a gem. This is, this is where you don't have to have a big book to have it be chock full of information. And this one is I think every leader or who someone is trying to be a leader should start with. For sure, yep. it is very concise. Um, but one of the areas in it you talked about was um, your like growing people and feeling like lack, right? Where you you have to hold on to your people. Where my philosophy was, if I had more leaders coming out of my team, that was mm -hmm. my philosophy. Then I would be able to grow people. No, and yeah. that's what I did. I was at one point I had a team of 30 and we ended up growing to a very large department, but mm -hmm. most of the leadership came out of my team. What's well, interesting because there are some people out there that believe if you hire top people that people are going to want to steal them. And so some people have made the descension that why hire the best people when people are just going to steal them. So instead I'll hire mediocre people and nobody will want them. Well, you see, when you say that, how that sounds, yeah, let's hire people that nobody else wants and try and make a business out of there. And I'm not saying that people can't rise to the occasion. They can, people are amazing. People, people are capable of so much. It's, it's shocking to me sometimes that people are really yeah. capable of. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I always, you know, look at when we talk about people um, hiring the best of the best, not the best of the worst. And yes. people, well, why would anybody hire the best of the worst? What well, happens all the time and it's happening today while we're talking. You run an ad, you get 10 people to respond to the ad, you interview five, none of them are perfect, but one of them is better than the other four. So you hire that one. And there's the problem. You can't build a company or a team of any high caliber of hiring the best of the worst. Got to hire the best of the best. So in, 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 you know, in, in a, this was my fourth book, by the way. And in my first book, I talked all about people. Uh, customer service is a contact sport. Um, and it's oh, I like that. sold thousands I like that. and thousands and thousands of copies. And it's the idea is if you put the right people and the right processes in the right place, and mm -hmm. they perform at a high level and you coach people on performance, um, amazing things happen. And I've built huge businesses that way. Won every award, every sales award, every district award, every regional, every national award in our companies by doing just that simple thing. But wow. you know, simple doesn't mean easy, right? Oh, absolutely. I love, the, I love that analogy. You have, and I have very similar analogies. Yeah. Simple does not mean easy. Golf is a perfect example. I play a lot of golf. Golf is a very simple sport. The ball is sitting there on a tee. You've got a club in your hand. You just hit it and let it go down there and hit it again and put it in the hole. And that's pretty simple, but it is not easy. And no. very few people in the history of the sport ever master it. Some get better than others. And sometimes we have our good days and our bad days. Right. But it's kind of like that in business, that business is really pretty simple, but it's not easy. Hire the best people, train them well. Sounds easy, right? Right. It ain't. It's not yeah. easy. It's very simple. There is a process, but putting that process in play consistently and, 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 and having those processes to guide you and whether it's, whether it's, you're recruiting 
chart of the kind of people you're looking for to how you're mm -hmm. going to find them to how you're going to interview them to how you're going to onboard them to how you're going to develop them they're all components of a very simple um plan but none of them are easy no and there's always tweaks along the way right always. and you're dealing with people so you have that complexity yeah. So oh, yeah. I'm going to shift gears just a little bit because I know I jumped right into to, you know, business and leadership, but I really think it comes yet. There's a beginning to this a little bit, right? Where it's a, there's a reflection and we're going to talk about blind spots. And then you said perspective, correct? Right. Okay. Well, yeah. In, in the book, and you mentioned the book and thank you for, for doing that. Um, this being my fourth book, we took an entirely different strategy for the book. We wanted to write a short book, something you could read literally in an afternoon or an evening, mm -hmm. uh, and you could absorb the information and do something with it. Mm -hmm. Because why write a big book that people only read the first three or four chapters and then they never finish it? And yes. I can't tell you, I think it's something in the neighborhood of 70% of books, maybe as high as 80% of books are never finished. They never, people never finish reading them because yep, and then when they, do, they don't do anything with the information. So what's the point? Right. Um, you know, I, I, you've heard me say this before. Um, it's not what you know, it's what you do with what you know and how you do it. The yeah. world is full of people that know what to do, but don't do it. Yes. Or they do it, but they don't do it very well. Or they don't do it consistently. Or so have the mentors to help sure, them get there. Sh sure. All, all of those things. But, you know, today there's somebody listening that says, you know, I have employees that know what to do. They just don't do it. They used to do it, but then they stopped doing it. Or they never really did it at the highest level. They do it like they'll ask for referrals and they'll say, hey, if you know anybody that needs you know, what we have, you know, let me know. Okay, that's a way to ask, and they did it, but it's not effective. Exactly. Not so, what effective. would you? So, in that instance, what would you? What was? What's one thing that you would have them change? Oh, the the verbiage. The verbiage is, and and again, it's not what you ask; it's how you ask, and when you ask. Why would you ask for a referral? Just say, taking something as simple as a referral. Why would you ask for a referral at the beginning? I know. That would, and, you haven't um, done anything for him. You haven't earned it. So, yeah. and you could say, well, okay, so you can wait to the very end, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is in some transactions, the very end of the transaction is full of a lot of other things and I, they might, might be distracted. Mm -hmm. So there's a point, a natural point, someplace near the end, but not at the end, where you talk about the importance of referrals and you talk about, I'm so glad that I've been able to help you here. And, you know, my business is completely built on referrals. So, you know, if you, if you feel, do you feel like I've taken good care of you? Yes. Then, then, you know, if you would, that would be great. I would love it if anybody that you know, you would refer to me. And then that's the first step. But then there's more steps. It's a process to stay in front of people. And I know we're not going to get in the whole sales concept here but yeah but you know i've been in sales and sales development and sales training a, a large part of my life so i mean mm -hmm. I, i've trained some of the best sales people in the country and and i i i i should say i get to train get to like yes. I get to do what i do i get to be who i am and and it's interesting but you know so when you talk about simple things like let's talk about um reflection we all as leaders need to be willing to reflect. Mm -hmm. How did I do? How did I not do? Am I accomplishing what I want to accomplish? Here's the question that I ask. Are you a good leader? And if you are, how do you know? That's, Who told you? Wow, that's a powerful question. Who told you? Is it because nobody said you're not? Uh, well, maybe those people would never tell you you're not a good leader because they work for you and they're afraid for their jobs or everybody likes you. So they don't want to hurt your feelings. And so you, everything's good because nobody's saying anything. Right. It's like mm -hmm. it's like that's not a good reflection. You need to really look at yourself and say, how do I know I'm a good leader? How do I uh, know that I'm in a place where my people really trust and respect all the things that we do together, not just the things I say to do. 
There's mm -hmm. a huge difference, and we talk about it in the book. There's a huge difference between bosses and leaders. Hundred percent. Right, and we we all know we all know if we're honest, we all know somebody who's in charge, but they're not a good leader. Yes. And we all know people that are good leaders, but they're not in charge. And so just because somebody listening today is in charge, they got promoted, they bought the company, they started the company, whatever it is, does not mean that you're an effective leader. And by the way, I use the word that our friend Bill Walsh uses all the time, even more. Every one of us within the sound of my voice can be an even more effective leader. Every one absolutely. of us. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. You might already be good. You might say, I'm good, but you could be even better. Even better. You could be even happier. You could make even more money. You could be even more balanced in your life. You could be in, in even better shape. Mm -hmm. Every one of us could be even more something. And yep. when, when we talk about leadership, it's not about you're okay or nobody's complaining. It's about, do you believe that you could be an even more effective leader? And if the answer is yes, it starts with being an even more effective leader of you. Self yeah. first. If you, you cannot be an effective leader of others, if you're not first yeah. an effective leader of self. Yep. And that's hard because some, I mean, who do you ask? How do you know? So in the book, we talk about uh, an assessment you do in a self-assessment, you know you better than anybody. Absolutely. And well, we hope us, we do. Well, we hope we do. Most of us know when we're impatient. Most of us know when we fail. Most of us know when we succeed. And as leaders, we're taught to focus on the positive and focus on the achievements and not worry about the failures. Well, I think you learn as much from the failures as you do from the successes. Absolutely. So we have Absolutely. to be balanced in how we look at it. We can't, oh my gosh, I failed, I screwed up, I yelled, I lost my temper. You Move on. Acknowledge mm -hmm. it, but learn from it. But oh, to learn from something, you have to acknowledge it, which brings us to blind spots. I loved that one. <laughs> That's a good one, right? Because, yes. <laughs> because Kim, we all have them. Like it, don't like it, doesn't matter. We all have them. We have them in our cars and we yes. have them in our life, right? Yes. What are they? Oh my goodness. The answer is, I don't know because I'm not you. You mm -hmm. might not know because you can't see them. And here's a good that, example. I'm sorry. No, I was just, the, the blind spot, when you said about the car, that's my biggest pet peeve in buying a car right? Mm -hmm. I want to see where the blind spots are. Mm -hmm. And when you brought that to the book, I had never thought of that before. Mm -hmm. I had never thought about it in leadership. And that's why I am, was so excited that, you know, that's one of the topics we were going to talk about today, because mm -hmm. we do, we have blind spots in our life. And it really got me thinking about what mine are. We all have them. And, 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 and I'm going to go back and say that one more time. We all have them period accept it we all have them some more than others some more dramatic than others but we all have them and every car has a blind spot unless it's got no metal in the way i have a big blind spot in my in my jeep right up here because the mirrors are big and i i i almost ran somebody over because i couldn't see him I yeah. was looking, but I couldn't see them. And they were moving at the exact same time I was. And I couldn't see them until I got right on top. And, oh, my gosh, I almost ran this person over. Uh -huh. And and here's an interesting thing. Um, that blind spot that you have on your right, on your rear quarter panel, every almost every car has it. You can easily mitigate that blind spot by moving your mirror out to pick up that blind spot. If this is, this, this is, I rarely share this. There's, there's, there's a million of these. This is one of those optimizations that I talk about that if you don't know it, it doesn't exist, but it does exist. Mm -hmm. And most people, if you look at, sit in your car, your, 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 
rear view mirror picks up what's behind you. Your side view mirror on the passenger side is usually set. And I'm saying 99% of people set it up. So it's seeing the same thing that's in your rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. If you take that mirror and you turn it out about 30 or 40 degrees, uh -huh. you will now pick up that blind spot, but you won't see anything else. You know why? Because there's nothing to see. You're already seeing it in your rear view mirror. Check okay. it out next time. Pull I want your car to. up in your driveway and put a car in your blind spot and then move that mirror out to pick up that car and you'll never you'll never have it any other way. Wow. You have a, but and see that mirror is a reflection, reflection of what's there. What's there that's in your blind spot you can't see, but it's there. So when you adjust your mirror or you adjust your mindset, you adjust your perspective to see that blind spot. You go, hmm, you know, I am a little impatient. I do say snide things to people. I, I am condescending sometimes when somebody doesn't do what I think they should have done because I've already told them three times. So now I give them a little condescending snide push, a little kick in the pants, but it's not good. Are those the common ones? That's I was going to ask you that. Very common. Very common. Those are the three common ones. They're, well, they're very common. We see them in leadership all the time. Uh, I, you know, I say some snide remark or some condescending comment to that, you know, gee, you haven't, when did you start here? Now, I've been here five years, but when did you start here again? See, you say stuff like that to try and motivate people to make them feel like, you know, kind of get their attention. And I get it. And, and, and I'm not saying sometimes they're not appropriate or, or, or they don't work and maybe they're fun sometimes. And maybe you have that kind of relationship where you can do that. But be careful because mm -hmm. condescending is never respectful. No, and I've, and I've experienced that and I don't like that. And none of us do. Yeah. But some of us don't even realize that we're doing it. Why? Because nobody says anything. Wow. See, this is all really powerful stuff this that is. most leadership programs won't teach you, don't teach you, because this is all common sense. But by the way, we know common <laughs> sense is not so common, right? Yes. It actually should be <laughs> I talk about that with my sense. children. <laughs> it should actually be called uncommon sense. Yeah. You have uncommon sense. Kim, yeah. you have a high degree of uncommon sense uncommon versus you sense. have a high degree of common <laughs> sense because common sense is an oxymoron. Jumbo yeah. shrimp, government intelligence, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, they're all not common. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, so, so it's funny oh. because I've, I've had a ball doing this stuff for 35, 40 years. But when I started to write the book and, and just recap all the things that I've learned, taught, learned from others, by the way, from the Maxwells and the Gerbers and all the other people that are out there, um, yeah. that, that there are fundamental things that leaders need to do. And unfortunately, the majority, the vast majority of leaders never get real training on leadership. They get training on I management. Agree. They get training mm -hmm. on management. They learn yes. how to manage the process. They learn how to manage people. They learn how to manage schedules, inventory, customer complaints. They learn to manage, manage, manage things. And to me, management is like the field supervisor who gets the equipment to the battlefield. Mm -hmm. schedules and logistics and all, it's all those the things. external it's external all that stuff is super important got to have it got to have product mm -hmm. you're in a product business guess what as nice as you are as great as you are you don't have your product you can't deliver for your customer you're done okay. it's over yeah it's done but see here's what's interesting most people expect that i buy something from you i expect to get it you say you're going to show up at a certain time. I expect you to show up at a certain time. Yeah. In some environments, it's even shocking when people do show up on time. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the state of service today sometimes. Yeah. But what's what stands apart and what really surprises people is when you show up on time and you're really nice. Mm -hmm. And you go the extra mile. 
and you say things that are uncommonly nice and and you're and you're you're polite from your voice inflection to your mannerisms to all of those things people wow you know what you're really you're really great you're awesome thank you and and it's that you want to you know the thing i think it's the most powerful thing that i experienced last year because of everything everybody was experiencing it was the follow through people told me they said kim the fact that I don't have to reach out to you and ask you if something's going to get done because you're constantly letting me know where the delays are, what's happening with this product, what's happening with that product. Mm -hmm. They're like, that was all the difference in my business last it's year. It's huge. And that is a follow-up system mm -hmm. that you bring to life with your personality and your character. Your personality and character doesn't get to come into play if the process is wrong. Because as nice as you are, what if you didn't make that call until after they call you? Oh, yeah. I have to do that sometimes. It's annoying. Being reactive instead of proactive. Mm -hmm. Knowing what's coming, knowing that that client's thinking about where their order is that's slightly delayed, and you make the call proactively to let them know what's going on there. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Kim. I, I was just, how many times have they said, I was just thinking about it? Yeah. Whether and they leadership. Were or they weren't. Yeah, I know. Who knows? But it's, it's amazing. It's but the leadership, like you said, everything was external. But the leadership part, I love how you said it's a reflection. It's a, you know, a blind spot. It's all internal. It's mm -hmm. about you, right? It, it sounds touchy feely, but it's not. It sounds touchy feely because it is. <laughs> right. Yes. This oh my goodness. Kumbaya. Oh, be nice and use the right soft tone. I don't, I, 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 the, in the book, we talk about how leadership is very dynamic, how it changes situation to situation in a mm -hmm. fire. I'm going to be a different kind of leader than if we're in a meeting, right? Yes. In an urgent situation, I'm going to be much more, um, autocratic and tell you what we need to do. We need to move out that door now. Grab your stuff, go. It's not going to be a collaborative thing where it's, no. see guys, the building's on fire. I'm thinking we might want to think about vacating. What do you guys think? Let's take a vote. Let's, let, now, which door should we go out? Let's talk. No, I don't know. I don't want to see that's There's not time for a collaboration in those situations, but I am a collaborative leader. I love collaboration. I want so to get my. everybody's opinion. Not that we're going to do it that way, but I want to know. I want to know. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Hmm, okay. Because probably we're all going to agree if our culture is right and our direction has been right to this point. We're probably all going to agree anyway. But it creates buy-in. It creates synergy. It yeah. creates a level of energy and commitment to that process that we all just agreed on. It is totally different. That's going to totally make it happen. Versus my way or the highway, you don't get mm -hmm. a say in it. And by the way, I'm going to remind you all the time that you don't get a say in it. How does that feel? It feels yeah. terrible. It's horrible. It's and horrible. I and I have some of my children that have experienced that in their in their work. My husband has experienced that. I've experienced it. I think a lot of people have. And when you get to mm -hmm. a culture where you're respected and you matter, mm -hmm. right? That's you know you. I'm going to start um, bringing this up as part of his, in the book, it says legacy of a leader mm -hmm. and it says people are the legacy of a leader. And I, that hit me so hard because I'm a legacy. I love that word. I love what it means is what I'm trying to create in my life for the people, you know, that I work with and I always have, but no one has said it in that way, but you. Well, thank you. I think, you know, it's, thank you. It, it's, it comes from a kind of a deep place for me because when somebody asked me you, maybe two or three years ago, they said, so tell me what's your legacy? And I thought, you know, a nice stock portfolio, some real estate investments, the books that I've written, you know, all the stuff. But when I said those things, they all sounded so superficial and so hollow. Um, 
Because there's stuff. It's stuff. And when I really sat down and thought about it, I thought, you know, what's really touched me, what's really made me feel great about who I am and what I do is the people that I touch. The people that say, you know what? I'm better because of you. I've achieved more. I've earned more. I've accomplished more. I'm a different person because of you and the things that we have learned together. Not just the things I've taught, but the things that have unfolded in front of us, the challenges, the opportunities, those things that that people you can. I love coming to work here. I love being on your team. I love our talks. That to me is my legacy, the people. And it's my son. It's my wife. It's my friends. It's my business associates. It's my business partners. Together, we do things that makes us all better. And that's a oh, cool legacy. It is. And I'm so grateful you mentioned that because I can honestly say I was, when I was reading this and, and all of our talks and our times together, I've, I learned something every time I'm with you and reading this book over and over. I mean, literally, I have been going over it for weeks now. Oh, thank you. And, and that is what you said it just beautifully, right? Is we are that legacy. I'm a better person because I know you, Joseph. I want to be able to give to people, right? And continue this legacy that you're creating, right? Paying it forward that the things that you've taught me, the things that you've influenced um, in our conversations. I mean, I've talked about, I on Coffee with Kim and other episodes where I talked about you and get to do what I get to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and isn't that an interesting story that 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 came to me, much like things that come to you mm -hmm. quite innocently when I was leaving my office to go pick up my son from school and take him to soccer practice when he was five years old. And it was back then it was really bunch ball, right? It wasn't really soccer. It was just mm -hmm. they run around and kick the ball. That was great. But I, but I, but I was leaving my office and I said to my, to my office manager um, that, you know, I, I have to go take Taylor to practice. And as soon as those words came out of my mouth, it sounded wrong because I don't have to, I get to. Mm -hmm. And it was that moment on that sunny afternoon that I, it changed, it changed me forever. Cause I started thinking about all the things that I get to do in my life. I get to, at the time I was traveling a lot. I get to get on that plane and go see this client. I get to go to this country. I get to talk to these people in that country. I'm mean, again, you said it and I've, I've worked in over 29 countries mm -hmm. and the challenge is always the same people process and performance doesn't matter the culture, doesn't matter the country, doesn't matter the product. They're, they all have their variables, but it's always the same. People, yeah. process, performance. And, and, and I learned to apply that. I get to raise my son. I get to go home to my beautiful wife. I get to go home to our nice home. I get to do all of these things that I've earned and I've created and I've made happen, but I get to do them. And I, I, I don't know if I was telling you, but one day my wife asked me to, to, to paint this cabin and I'm not a painter. Okay. But I bought the <laughs> spray thing and I sanded it down and I did a beautiful job and I had it out in the garage all covered with plastic all over and it was great. And I was like, yeah, this looks pretty good. And it actually looks really good. Yeah. Um, but then I got to scrub the floor in my garage for two hours on my hands and knees because paint got all over. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to do this, but you know what I did? I changed my perspective and said, I'm going to have a great two hour workout on my hands and knees. I'm going to be uh, in this position. I'm going to be wax on wax off. And I got a great workout for two hours and didn't have to go to the gym that day. Hey, so you scrub the floor and be miserable or you scrub the floor and make it a workout and had my great music on. And it was a great day. Goodness, it how really often, does. Mm -hmm. How often yeah. do we sometimes just to change our perspective? And and by the way, in the book you'll read this, and I know you got this. That reflection tells us 
about us and what we're thinking, what we're doing, how we're doing it. But when you talk about perception and you talk about perspective, that equals mindset. Because wow. our mindset, right, is made up of our perspectives and our perceptions. Perception is superficial. It's what I think I saw. Yeah. It isn't true. It's just what I think I saw. It's what I think I heard. But then when we get to perspective, that starts to formulate our thoughts. I'm, hmm, this is how I feel about this. But that's different than mindset. Mindset's deep. It is. Mindset is how you feel about your family how you feel about God, how you feel about important things to you in your life. That's mindset. That doesn't change easily. And that's, it's interesting that you say that because that's one of the things that's very distinct for me. And that, and that one of the things I teach is you have mindset, right? Cause that's like you said, that's very set, mm -hmm. but so often we need to adopt the mind shift mm -hmm. where we're able to shift that mm -hmm. that might you know that perspective mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. reflection whatever it is is being able to shift because we have to that's part of that growth process mm -hmm. well it's interesting because let's say um I do, I do a lot of as you know i'm also been teaching for rutgers for this is now my eighth year wow and rutgers school of business and largest you know it's one of the oldest universities in the country and it's a business school. And so we teach leadership and management in those classes. And it's just something that I picked up doing. It was a, it was a, a online thing and I go, oh, I do it and I love it. And now I've got clients all over the country, all over the world. And it's interesting because we talk about how you influence somebody's mindset. And if you back out of it, mindset is influenced by perspective and perspective is influenced by perception. Mm -hmm. So in order to change somebody's mindset, you have to change your perspective. And to do that, you show them different perceptions, different ideas, different ways to think about it. And people go, hmm, never thought about it that way. What did we just do? We started to shift their perspective mm -hmm. on it. Like, hmm, I hadn't really thought about that before. Maybe I should look at that again. And once we do that, now we can develop a mindset that is firmly entrenched on what we believe and what we're committed to. And that drives action. Oh, so, right. so think about that. I mean, there's a lot of little golden nuggets. No, there's, there is. And, and that, that is a perfect one for us to, to kind of wrap up on because mm -hmm. that, the, say, say that again, I want you to repeat it. Well, if you want to change somebody's mindset, you have to influence or show them new perspectives. And you do that by showing them different perspectives, perceptions, right? Mm -hmm. Those things we perceive, those things, hmm, I hadn't heard it that way. I haven't seen it that way before. Then it starts to shape my perspective on things. My perspective is, yeah, I, I, I guess I do believe that. I, I see how that would work. And that if applied long enough within, with enough of discipline, and, 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 and consistency will become your mindset. And that's where you take action. And that's and, the action and, piece. Action because, on the right things. Mm -hmm. Think about that. You've heard this before that, you know, one of the most frustrating things in business is to climb the ladder really hard only to realize it's on the wrong wall. <laughs> right? <laughs> I haven't there, heard, right? I've heard variations, but I hadn't heard that one. <laughs> but it's like, oh, I just did all this work and all that made all this effort and all to put all this energy and time into it. Only it's on the wrong wall. Mm -hmm. Now I do go back and start over. And that happens in jobs and happens in relationships. It happens in all kinds of things. Sure and, does. And it happens in projects. Uh, entrepreneurs like that shiny stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And they run over there and they run over here and they run over there. And all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I just spent a year doing nothing. Yeah. versus having a plan but anyway we we do need to tie up but it, it it's we could talk as we've said before kim we could i know for days about for this days thing. i know <laughs> <laughs> joseph thank you so much for coming everyone i hope you go back and literally watch this multiple times because you will get so many nuggets here he is a man that i'm like i said to be able to call him friend to be able to call him on him 
it is such an honor for me. And I have learned so much over the last year and a half with him. And Joseph, thank you so, so much. You're welcome. Um, he has given us to give you a gift. Yeah. The gift is to text leadership to 77948. That's text leadership to 77948. And he will send you one of um, an article that you did, correct? It's it's a it's a it's a um, it's an article on leadership, and I think it would be helpful. And if people want to order the book, they can order the book uh, at our at my website at theleaderofyou.com. Oh, um, okay. I probably need to put that up there, but I didn't do yeah. that, so I will make sure I get that in the comments. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So leaderofyou.com. Leader of yep. so um, I want to show you this really quick. I did do this. Everyone, mm -hmm. this is what it looks like. You cannot be an effective leader of others if you are not an effective leader of you. And I did this, which is also going to go into our um, our page because I just think it's very, very powerful. Thank you. Joseph, again, thank you so much. And um, everyone here, I just, I'm so honored um, to have the amazing guests that have been coming on here. Joseph, as you will as you get to know him and you get to read about him and perhaps his other books, he is a wealth of knowledge and his leadership is bar none. I, there's so many nuggets here. I hope you have enjoyed today. I am your host, Kim Bassett, and just thank you so much for joining us.